What was a historic and disturbing moment today in Lower Manhattan, where a full jury of 12 jurors, six alternates, were seated in the falsifying business records case of former President Donald Trump? Well, at about the same moment that news was announced, a man literally set himself on fire in front of the courthouse. The flames, they were extinguished, and he was rushed away on a stretcher to a local hospital. Officials say he threw conspiracy theory-based pamphlets in the air right before the incident. But the scary event only highlights the very high tension surrounding what is now officially set to be the first ever criminal trial of a former U.S. president. We have opening statements. They are set for Monday in this case. Meanwhile, another New York Trump case, it won't go away. Why? The Attorney General of New York, Letitia James, is now formally opposing the bond that President Trump put up to appeal his civil fraud trial. She says it's not structured properly and that the bond company does not appear to have enough cash on hand to pay the bond if, in fact, Trump doesn't. And here with a full recap of this week's jury selection, a preview of opening arguments next week and what's ahead. Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett, Harvard Law professor Alan Dershowitz is with us. Uh, I, I don't know what to say about the guy putting himself on fire. Not exactly uh, recommended a recommended form of protest uh, of any kind, sad in many ways. Professor, let's take a look at where we are in this case. There's, there's so many issues here that it makes my blood boil. Number one, you have a judge that donated to Biden. Number two, you have the issue of a family member that is active in Democratic politics at a high level, seemingly involved in this case, according to Elise Stefanik. Uh, on top of that, you have the statute of limitations have passed on what would be a misdemeanor charge in New York, but somehow, and we still don't completely know how, uh, he, Alvin Bragg has somehow connected this to a federal crime that the DOJ passed on. They didn't want to charge Trump on, mm -hmm. and they're trying to make this into a felony case. On every level here, and the president has a gag order, on every level, I don't see equal justice under the law. I don't see a fair trial. I don't see an environment where, where I would feel comfortable that justice is being served. Your thoughts? I agree completely. As a liberal Democrat and civil libertarian, I am appalled that the first case, criminal case against the president, is the weakest case I've seen in 60 years of practice and writing about the law. Everything you mentioned, plus they're trying to keep him in the courtroom against his will and preventing him from campaigning. He has the right to be in the courtroom. The government, the prosecution has no right to keep him in the courtroom. And then there's the jury selection. As a defense attorney, I would be very unhappy with the 12 jurors, as I've seen their backgrounds outlined. They seem like typical Manhattan residents. Now, that's okay if you want to move to a neighborhood and have friends. But if you want to have a jury against Donald Trump, the last thing you want is a typical representative group of people from a borough that voted 85 percent against Trump and where probably 70 percent of the people hate him with a passion. The defense attorneys probably did the best they could with the jury pool to try to pick 12 people who will be fair. But boy, I have to tell you, the likelihood of people being able to not take into account their personal views, their political views, their hatred for Donald Trump is negligible. So I don't think he's going to get a fair trial. I think it's very possible he'll get convicted in time for the election. It will have an impact on the election, and then the conviction will be reversed on appeal. But election interference will have been accomplished. I want to see this election fair and square. Whoever wins this election ought to be able to do it proudly, and whoever loses it should be able to say, I lost it fair and square. That's not happening with this trial and with the other four cases, including the civil case against him, that are constituting election interference. It's a scandal. Much of it is unconstitutional, and all of it is un-American. And it's amazing. Liberals will say, well, he'll have a chance on appeal on the issue of recusal and, and the gag order and, and so on and so forth, and, and why this is really a misdemeanor case and the statute of limitations. However, 
That means the trial, and if yeah. there is a guilty verdict, that would take place before the election. Any appeal would probably, right. and if it's, and if if it's reversed on appeal, would happen after the election. That's a problem, Greg Jarrett. Absolutely. Yeah. It Witches had a better chance of a fair trial in Salem than Donald <laughs> Trump in Manhattan. Wait a you minute. Know, jury selection that, proved wait it. Wait a minute, it, Greg. I wish I thought of that. Yeah. Continue. <laughs> jury selection proved it, Sean. When asked, an absolute flood of people said they cannot and will not be fair to Donald Trump. They don't want to be fair. And how many of those who said otherwise, oh, yeah, yeah, I can be fair. How many of those are actually lying with a hidden agenda of getting on the jury to convict? You know, Manhattan, as the professor points out, is an inherently hostile venue for the accused. And in a politically charged case against an outspoken political candidate that's hated especially there in Manhattan, the jurors are predisposed. The outcome is preordained. This case should have been moved elsewhere to Staten Island, for example, where at least the jury pool would be more balanced. But Alvin Bragg opposed it. So to Judge Mershon, no coincidence, which is evidence that they both know this prosecution is legally weak, if not utterly absurd. So they are counting on a prejudiced jury to convict this is a wretched abuse of power in our justice system. And I agree with Professor Dershowitz. <laughs> this is unquestionably, irrefutably election interference. They want to be able to call Donald Trump a convicted felon over the next several months, all the way to election day, even though they know it'll be tossed and reversed on appeal. Thank you both. Uh, Professor, thank you. Have a great weekend, Greg. You too.